That's where my question 11 will be useful. Surprisingly, it's, it's 10, not 11. But uh, So in question 10, we have a 2 times 2 matrix, A. So it's a square matrix of size 2. And we have an assumption that this matrix commutes. You see, when something like this happens, it means that we say matrix commutes with any other 2 times 2 matrix. It's a nice question to ask, actually, right? We just discovered with you that the multiplication is not commutative in, in matrices. So if you, flip the th if you flip the factors around, you'll be a different result. It's reasonable to ask for which matrices it will be commutative, isn't it? Why not? Maybe there is like a smaller subclass in the whole class of 2 times 2 matrices or the whole class of 3 times 3 or n by n matrices for which we do have commuted com commutativity. It's a nice question. It's a nice research question. And question 10 basically just does this for us. So the question says, imagine we have a matrix which commutes with any other one. It happens so. The question insists that inside, well, it says prove that this matrix will be very simply structured. It will be a scalar multiple of the identity. It's, it's a bit like a, a frustration, right? So we, we, just, we just pick up a matrix which commutes with everything. It turns out it's a very simply structured, just a scalar multiple of the identity. On one side, it's a frustration because it, it, it tells us that most of the matrices, not, such, not, not, not like so, most of them will fail the commutativity. So it's the problem with the non-commutative non problem with the matrix, matrix multiplication. So it's a substantial, serious problem. But the problem itself is nice. So here's the statement of the question 10. Again, we have a matrix which commutes with any other one. Our job is to prove that such a matrix is a scalar multiple of the identity. Uh, let's just say, let's just say my matrix A has, here's my general entries of the matrix A. A11, A212, A21, A22. What I suggest is this. My experience, my experience with these matrix multiplications, especially the one I just presented with you in question 11, tells me that if I do this, look at this. If I consider the matrix X, and I call it X1, which has these entries, that can give me lots of information. Look what I'm going to say. If I choose such a matrix, look, the, the statement says that my A, this unknown A we're looking for, it commutes with any 2 times 2 matrix. In particular, it will commute with this choice. So in particular, I do have the relation like this. Let's, com let's compute what the left-hand side is, what the right-hand side is. I will be computing, of course, with these symbols, with these unknowns, but it's a relatively easy task. I claim, I claim that the left product, I mean the product on the left-hand side, will be this result. I think it should be zero. Uh, it's, it's, this, is, this one is a typo. It should be zero here. And I claim that the right-hand side product will be this result. Let's double check. This element, first row, first column, so it is first row of the first factor, here it is, and the first column of the second factor, here it is. Let me ask you a question. When I first opened this matrix, was it zero here or one? one. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> now, it's supposed to be zero here. It's, it's, it's just a few ty two typos on this question. It's not like a Actually, typos. It's a minor glitch which I have to fix, but I, can, I think we can survive one lecture with this. So let me just repeat this. Here is supposed to be zero, so the matrix like so. And I claim, I claim that the left pro left product, I mean the product like this on the left hand side will be in fact this this matrix. Here's a confirmation for you. First element, it's a dot product of these two boxes. It is a11. This this element. This element, it's a dot product of these two boxes. It's A to 1. This element, it's a dot product of these two boxes. It is 0. And this product, uh, this element, I'm sorry, it's a product of these two boxes. In fact, in fact, I just, I took you through this every entry, but in fact, I could have argued this easier. Because this one, this one, in the, in the, in the light of the question 11, first column here, is the vector E11. And when I multiply by the E11 from the right-hand side, I cut out the first column. Here, here we go. First column of this matrix. 
Well, when I multiply by zero vec by zero matrix, it will be zero matrix. You see, multiplying by this first basis vector from the left or from the right leaves the first column in in, in place, but the, the zeros here they vanish the other columns. So when I when I'm going to present the argument for this, I'm no longer I'm not gonna, no longer going to take you for entries. I'm going to say multiplying the matrix by the first basis vector, or in fact, this time I have to look at this as a row, first basis vector from the left-hand side keeps the first column, first row of the matrix, but the other one will be vanished. You see, here's the efficiency comes into the, into the, into the game. We now know, well, because we're dealing with these standard basis vectors, the, we know how to predict the result. The, res, the result of the multiplications either cutting the columns or rows. And in fact, now, because we have the identity, because we have the identity, this must be equal to this. I can conclude that the A12 is 0 and A21 is 0. So my conclusion from this computation is that in this matrix, which commutes with every 2 times 2 matrix, the, the, the elements of diagonal must be 0. And I, conclude, I concluded this by observation, by taking the product with only one candidate, with only one choice. How did I choose that, you ask me? The experience with, with, the, with the matrix multiplication, especially the experience I presented in the question 11, suggested me choosing, choosing a matrix like this. It suggested that if I choose a matrix like with the first basis vector in the, in the first column and the zero of the rest, I will cut out the first column or the first row. And the rest will be vanished. This is the experience which, suggest, which suggested me how to choose X1 matrix. Any questions for the first part? Now, remember, we are looking for the matrix A, which meets this property that it commutes with any 2 times 2 matrix like so. Basing on that, we already concluded that in this matrix, inevitably, all diagonal elements must be zero. Now we have to see what happens with the diagonal elements. To deal with the diagonal elements, look, to, to deal with the diagonal elements, look what, what kind of matrix I'm going to choose. This one. This time I'm going to choose this matrix. It's another two times two matrix. Again, because of this condition, my A will commute with this matrix as the condition of the question. And I'm going to see what kind of things I can pull out from this observation. Again, I'm going to compute the left hand side. And I'm going to compute the right hand side. Again, I'm going to do this with boxes. I will open the results and I'll take you through the entries. I'll open this result first. Let's just see why this one is such. Here's my first element. It's a first row, second column. So it's a first row in the left factor. Here it is. And the first row, first column in the second factor. Here it is. When you dot product them, it will be A, 1, 2. What about this element? It's the first row, second column. First row here, second, second column here. The result is A11. Now, this element, second row here, first, co first column here. Dot product is A22. Everyone with me on this one? Well, then the, re the remaining one will be similarly. If I go here, it will be the dot product of the row here in the column here in the column like this. It will be A to 1. I did the multiplication for you. By looking at the matrix, can you tell me structurally what kind of effect of the product of this matrix on my A did? How can you summarize the effect in the structural language? Okay, yeah, actually, it's, uh, yes, it's true. It flips the side. Well, well, because I used the column language or row language before, I, I, I was hoping you will say it flips the columns. But it flips sideways will do for me, yes. It, 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 swaps, it swaps the columns. How nice it is. I mean, like, this choice of a matrix and you... This choice of a matrix and multiplication by this matrix from the right-hand side, it swaps the columns. First goes to the second position and second goes to the first. Well, I think you can now tell me what's going to... I mean, you don't have much of the intuition with this yet, but even now, probably some of you can guess that what will happen if I multiply my A by the same matrix, but now from the left-hand side. 
it will swap rows. How did I know that? In my experience, I know that if you take a matrix like this type, you will do some structural rearrangement of rows. And so here's my swapping of the rows this time. And remember, this one is equal to this one. If I look at only this element, A22 and A11, I can conclude that these two must be identical to each other. If I give a name to this identical number, if I call it alpha, then my matrix A must be of this structure. Remember, we just vanished. The, we proved that the off-diagonal vanishing and diagonal elements is simply identical, alpha and alpha. This is simply the scalar multiple of the identity matrix. And that finishes the proof of the question 10.